That's why Christians gather together. To think about Jesus, to hear his story, to pray to Jesus, and to celebrate Jesus. That's why we sing. We celebrate about Jesus. Uh, so what I'm going to do now in my sermon is I'm going to talk about one of his disciples. You know what a disciple is? A disciple is someone who you teach. In fact, in the, in the simple version, a disciple is a learner, someone who learns. So I would like to think that we're all disciples of Jesus, right? <clears throat> because we're trying to learn about him. And then ultimately become like him. Well, I'm going to talk about one of his very first disciples. <clears throat> Maybe you've heard of this disciple. His name was Peter. And he became a very, very important disciple. <clears throat> All disciples are important. But Jesus appointed Peter to be a real leader. So I want to talk about Peter. Does anybody know what Peter did for a living before he met Jesus? Does anybody know? Wasn't he a fisherman? He was a fisherman. That is correct. He was a fisherman. <clears throat> Some of the other disciples were fishermen too. James, John were fishermen. That's exactly right. But one day he met Jesus, and Jesus said, in their very first meeting, Peter, I want you to follow me. And he did. And that made all the difference in the world. Peter um, had a wonderful life. Peter was a really interesting guy. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Peter was a little bit of a hothead. Do you know what I mean by that? I mean, before he came to Jesus, he went around looking for a fight a lot. You ever know anybody like that? It just seemed like they went to fight all the time. Well, that was Peter. Plus, Peter was very impetuous. <clears throat> I don't know if you know about that uh, word or not, but it means he did things sometimes without thinking about it. You know how that sometimes <clears throat> before you act, you should think about what you're fixing to do. Well, Peter didn't do that very much. <clears throat> he would... Uh, Sometimes he was very impetuous, he was very spontaneous, and it got him into some trouble. Well, as time went on, he got better at that. When he was around Jesus, Jesus helped him with that. I'm going to tell you this right now. Once you make a decision to follow Jesus, he helps you with a lot of stuff. I'm not what I used to be because of Jesus. I'm not what I'm going to be either. I'm still growing and improving every day. That's what it means to follow Jesus. Well, Peter became an apostle. Thank you. Peter became an apostle, and uh, he became a leader in the church, and he sat down, and he wrote some letters. He wrote letters to churches that were all over the place. Um, these, were these were churches that Peter never visited. He never went to these churches that we know of. However... He wrote them some letters to help them be better churches. And we have those letters now. Those are 2,000 years old, these letters. You know what we call them? We call these letters 1st and 2nd Peter. That's what we call these letters. Now, I'm not sure if Peter was a, a real good writer or not. We know that Paul was, but I'm thinking that Peter was not a great writer. That's why he invited one of his friends to sit down and write the letter for him. It's called dictation. So what Peter did, he would talk about something, and this person, the first letter, this person's name was Sylvanus. This person would write for him. and uh, But it was Peter's words, but Sylvanus wrote them down. And he wrote these letters. Now, he wrote them to churches, but I want you to remember... Churches back then, almost 2,000 years ago, were not anything like this. First of all, there were no church buildings that you could call, you know, a church. That, that didn't happen for a long, long time. That was later. So it was mostly people worshiping in one another's homes. And they called those churches. Well, why did they call them churches? 
Because they gathered together to talk about Jesus, and they gathered together to pray, and they gathered together to sing, and it, that was a lot like this. I mean, this is, this is what they did too, just what we've done this morning. So there was some teaching, and there was prayer, and there was maybe some a, a sermon from the Word, but lots of singing. And they sang in one another's homes. Well, let me tell you why Peter wrote this letter. These churches were really kind of discouraged. Have you ever been discouraged? Well, the people in these churches were discouraged. Because, well, there was persecution that was starting to take place, and maybe there's some problems in the church that we don't even know about. But they were discouraged, and Peter wrote these letters to encourage them. Just like I hope today that I can encourage you. I want you, when you leave here, to feel encouraged. That's my purpose, is to try to encourage you. Does anybody here need encouragement, or is it just me? Does anybody need encouragement? That's what I'm going to try to do today. Okay? Encouragement. And he basically said three things in this first letter. Here's what he said. Don't forget that Jesus saved you. Now, sometimes we, we know that, but we have a tendency to forget it. And we don't think about that very much, especially when discouraging times come along. We go, oh, poor me. My life has really gotten very, very bad. But Peter's saying, don't ever forget your salvation because the fact that Jesus saved you is the biggest and most important thing that will ever happen to you. No matter how hard your life gets, that does not change. You used to be in a place of darkness. Now you're in a place of light. You used to be an old creature that did things old ways, and sometimes they were hurtful. Uh, they were hurtful. But now that you're a Christian, all things have become new. And we don't repeat those behaviors anymore. You know, we have a different lifestyle now. But sometimes we have a tendency to forget that. So I think coming to church is important, if only for this. And it's important for a lot of reasons, but coming to a church like this is important because it helps you remember who you are and what Jesus has done for you. We need to be reminded of that, and also we need to be encouraged. The second thing that he said to them in 1 Peter was this. Don't forget your privileges. Are you guys familiar with the word privilege? You have a privilege. Um, it's like you have permission and you have somebody's blessing to do something. Like, for instance, uh, we say something is a right. I have a right. That's true. We do have certain rights here in the United States. But we also have privileges that have been given to us by God. We have the privilege of living like Jesus. And it is privilege. Now, I have a grandson who is 16 years old. And guess what? He just got his license. And he's been driving his car now for what? About two weeks? That he's out there, he's got that driver's license boy. And you know, the one thing I said to him as his grandfather, you know, grandfathers are supposed to say certain things to the grandsons. <laughs> I said to him, I want you to remember, Baze, that having a, a license is a privilege. It is. Um, so I know you work really hard and you, uh, you've got a clean record and you're a good kid and you work really hard and you took your tests and passed your test and your driving test and you learn how to parallel park and all that stuff. But every time that you get in a car, remember, driving is a privilege. It's not just a right. It's a privilege. And so as a Christian, I want you to know that you have certain privileges. And here's a really, really important one. You have the privilege, because you are a Christian, of stopping and talking to Jesus anytime you want. Anytime you want. And you know that he'll hear you. And here's another privilege. 
Jesus is with you everywhere you go. And you say, well, that's a right of mine. No, it's not. You didn't earn that. It's a gift. It's a privilege that Jesus is with us all the time. And I must say, I'm thankful for the United States of America. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good place to live. And I'm thankful that because I live in the United States, I am free. I have the privilege to walk out my front door and come to church. And that's not true everywhere, kids. That's not true everywhere. A lot of people do not have that privilege. Now, one thing I want to remind you of, we should never take our privileges, and never take advantage of our privileges, and we should never, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Take them for granted. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Thank you so much for your help. I'm a better preacher when you help me. So, uh, we never want to take that for privilege. But, you know, there are lots of people in the world that have that privilege but don't take advantage of it. They take it granted for it. And so there's no room in their life for God. You have the privilege of opening up your whole life to God and experiencing all of God's blessings. So I want to encourage you to do that. And one final thing I want to, I want to share with you from 1 Peter. Don't forget to honor God by living a holy life. Say, a holy life? I thought that was for saints. I thought that was for the apostles. I can't live a holy life. Well, let me tell you what I think a holy life is. A holy life is loving God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself. And it's absolutely amazing when you make a commitment to do that. And I know it's not easy. It's simple, but it's very hard. Not so hard loving God, you know? But when you start talking about loving your neighbor, ooh, that can get tough sometimes. Um, Jesus spent quite a bit of time describing who our neighbors are. Let me tell you who your neighbor is. Would you like to know who your neighbor is? It's the person standing right in front of you. It's the person you live with. It's also the person down the street that you don't know that maybe, you know, uh, doesn't take their trash out the way they should or, you know, some other thing that's not being very courteous. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you is, um, everyone is our neighbor. And here's what Jesus asked us to do. I want you to live a holy life by loving me. We'll talk about sometime how we show that we love God, but also loving your neighbor. So I want to encourage you today to do three things. Number one, remember the fact that you're a child of God and that you've been born again and that Jesus is your Savior. Don't forget that. Pastor, but it happened so long ago I hardly remember it. Okay, that's fine. Just make sure that you are saved, that you're born again. Um, if you need to pray that prayer, you can pray that anytime and Jesus will come into your heart. When I was a child, I used to sing this song. Come into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You can sing that. You can say that any time. He will. He will come into your heart. And then you're born again. And then you're a child of him. And then you have all these wonderful privileges are yours. You have freedom. You have joy. You have peace. You have all these wonderful gifts that now become privileges. And finally, you know, you're then enabled to live a holy life, which is loving God and loving others. So that's my word for today. I hope that's an encouragement to you. Let me tell you something. You should be encouraged. Seriously. And I know there's a lot that's going on in the world that's wrong. But what I just shared with you is right. And it's good. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our time together. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless our final song. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone who came out today. 
uh, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I feel loved by you right now. Thank you, Jesus. And then, Lord, with this closing song, may we leave here encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And before